A dream of Omaha that began when snow was on the ground in many places across the country is one step closer to realization for 64 teams today. Army West Point and Texas Tech start our doubleheader. Dallas Baptist and Florida follow later tonight here in Lubbock, Texas. Welcome to NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. The field of hundreds narrowed down to 64 into college baseball's postseason at 16 sites around the country. After this weekend, only 16 teams will remain and then eight will go on to Omaha at the College World Series that begins two weeks from tomorrow. Here in Lubbock, we've got four teams. Texas Tech out of the Big 12, Army West Point out of the Patriot League, Dallas Baptist from the Missouri Valley Conference, and Florida out of the SEC. We're so glad to have you here with us this afternoon. My cousins, along with Greg Swindell, a three-time All-American at the University of Texas, you know just as well as anyone, the stage, the lights, bigger and brighter in the postseason. Yeah, you only get two losses in the postseason, so you have to play loose. If you play tense, uh, you t tend to make mistakes, and if, when you make mistakes, they can really catch up with you in the postseason. The Red Raiders have not made many here at home this season. A phenomenal year for them, regular season champs in the Big 12. Yeah, they've been very good under Tim Tadlock. Five of seven seasons, they've been to the postseason. Season. Two out of the last three, they've been to the College World Series. A perennial national seed are the Red Raiders and looking to get back to the College World Series this year. And for Army, Jacob Herdebees, you see right there, just a junior, 45 stolen bases, 70 runs scored, both league records for the Patriot League. And in a career, uh, over 100 stolen bases and 140 walks for the leader of Army. Texas Tech, no strangers with Omaha for Army, just their second Power 5 opponent this year. David and Goliath, Army, Texas Tech with first pitch next. Just moments away from first pitch here in Lubbock, Texas. The Black Knights of Army West Point out of the Patriot League and Texas Tech, the Red Raiders, out of the Big 12. Second straight Patriot League championship. Last year went to Raleigh and defeated NC State in their opener. So they're in the postseason for back-to-back -back years. Jacob Hurtabees at the top of their lineup. Very strong offensive threat. Under Jim Foster now in his third season. Formerly the head coach at Rhode Island and also an assistant at Boston College. Herdeby is at the top, 45 stolen bases. Walden behind him has five home runs. Trey Martin, the team leader, in the lineup with seven home runs. McKenna, Adams, Ceruto at catcher. Tim Simos at second base. And Drake Titus in right field for the Black Knights, who see a young but talented arm on the hill today for Texas Tech. It's Micah Dallas. Micah, Micah Dallas out of Aubrey, Texas, the freshman. Got a good arm, good fastball. Didn't make his first start until March 21st for the Red Raiders, but has been very good in that role as a starting pitcher. Getting the call. I think Tim Tadlock yesterday in the news press conference said, I think you know who's starting for us, Micah Dallas. It's a good sign for them, a member of the Big 12 all-freshman team. Taking the mound here in front of what purports to be a full house. They announced all tickets were sold before the start of the regional. Some folks still filing in. It is a bit warm today, but comfortable weather here in Lubbock to get this four-team regional underway. Yeah, still not warm for Texas, right? No, that feels, and, feels and good. It, it's all relative, right? <laughs> yeah. It's very comfortable weather and great for the final day of May. So here comes Herdebees. The junior from Zionsville, Indiana, outside of Indianapolis. On a 15-game hitting streak and the best hitter in the Patriot League, batting average-wise against the freshman Dallas. And with that pitch, the Lubbock Regional is underway. A couple of hops for Warren, one pitch, and one out for Dallas. Trying to jump on Micah Dallas real early right there. It's not like difficult when you have never faced a guy to go out and just pack at that first pitch but with his speed heard of figures he could put it on the ground and maybe get there but hit it right to Warren at first 
Andre Walden, the sophomore out of Orlando. Top two guys in this lineup. 70 stolen bases between them. So if they get on, that's where havoc can be wreaked by Army. So it's crucial for them to start with those two getting on base. Well, teams in the nation don't have 70 total. They got right. their first two. Dallas behind 2-0. Seventh regional for Army, their first coming back in 2000, the Montclair Regional. Scratch your head and go, Montclair, I know it's in New Jersey, but who was hosting that? It was Rutgers. 2-1 two, pitch is in for a strike, 2-2. Two and two. But Army has never played in a Super Regional before. Walden is down on strikes, two up and two down for Dallas as he fell behind and gets him on three straight. Falls behind, comes back with a couple fastballs, but this the slider just drops straight down right on the plate. Can't catch up with it right there. So around this time of year, hitters have the in and out down, but it's tough to gauge up and down. That one just right on the plate and swung right over the top of it. Foul tip by Anthony Jakeen, the third baseman. Native of New Jersey and on the Patriot League first team this year. He's been well regarded ever since he showed up on campus a couple of years ago. Last year was the Patriot League's Rookie of the Year as well as the league's tournament MVP. Dallas looking to go one, two, three here in the first. He went around, ball scoots away from Fulford. Two strikeouts back to back in the inning. Not a ball out of the infield for the freshman Dallas and a potent Texas Tech lineup coming to the plate. Army went down one, two, three in the top half of the first. So here comes Texas Tech, the number eight national seed. And look out for this lineup. A team that's won 16 of its last 20, a possible first round pick. And Josh Young in the cleanup spot. Cameron Warren, even more lethal numbers behind him hitting fifth. Masters, Wilson, Murrell, and Fulford. Round out the starting nine for Texas Tech. They go up against Daniel Burgraff, a Patriot League first teamer for Army. The big right-hander, senior out of Allen, Washington. And Gabe Holt in the leadoff spot for the Red Raiders. His 14th start of the season. 82 inning pitch, 82 strikeouts, averaging a strikeout an inning right there. Not many walks for 82 innings. It's a different bird though now. Got the postseason. Got five guys in the lineup today. They have more batting over 300, but five batting over 300 in this lineup. You have to be on top of your game. Holt is a player who finds a way to get on base. No matter how he has to do it, he's reached in 112 of his 119 career games. He's an exciting player. When he gets on base, though, you got to watch out for those legs, too. He rips one, pass to diving Adams at first base, and it's going for extra bases into the corner, potentially three. He takes the turn around second. The relay throw bounces away on the infield. And Holt is into third base to start off the bottom of the first. That's how you want to start it off. Gets the ball up in the zone. Just hangs right on the inner half. And Gabe Holt keeps it fair down the first baseline. Never looks up coming around first base. 
He knows his speed. Gets in there sliding. Fired up. Good start for the Red Raiders. Lead off triple sets up Tanner Otremba nicely. So make it all but seven games in his young career. Otrumba at the dish, freshman from Colorado, and one of the best coming out of that state in the class of 2018. 2 0 from Burgraff. Try to be too fine. He left one up over the plate for Holt to hit down the right field line. Now it seems he's trying to be too fine with it, not get hit, just being the second batter of the ball game. A little different when there's a 3 0 count. He gets the called strike from Craig Barron, the home plate umpire, this afternoon in game number one. on that outside part of the plate where a couple pitches ago he didn't get the call. Hence Otremba thinking ahead for first. Good pitch. It was a perfect location. If you're Otremba, you're looking for something over the middle of the plate. It wasn't his pitch. Tried to work the walk out of it. 3-2 center of field. Heard a bees. He's under it. Should be deep enough to score the run. Holt tags, and he is in. One hop ahead of the throw. Two batters in. Texas Tech has a 1-0 lead over Army. Trimba does his job, gets the ball deep enough for Holt. He does tag. He started to take his time, and that throw by Herdebees made it a little closer for comfort right there. That was a nice throw. Yes, it was. Rudabee's out there in center field. Strong defender. Now it's Brian Klein. Out of Keller, Texas. A 342 hitter. So top of this lineup. Guys who find ways to get on base for the Red Raiders. They've won 16 of their last 20. The run totals have been staggering. 148 to 61 is what they've done, outscoring the opposition. The next three hitters with Klein and Young and Warren. Very experienced veteran players. A lot of at bats realize the zone. Takes the two strike pitch, floats it to left center for her to bees. He's got back to back put outs, and there are two away for the Red Raiders. Well, Josh Young, this is a guy who come Monday is going to perhaps hear his name in the first round of the Major League Baseball draft. He's now the shortstop, started out the season as the third baseman. They moved him over there in the middle of April. And that's what his head coach, Tim Tadlock, says has been a turning point for this team. You could point to a couple of other dates on the calendar, but the co-Big 12 Player of the Year and a semifinalist for the Golden Spikes Award. And the numbers speak for themselves. Yeah, they do. He's, he's a very good player, really has a lot of power. Can hit the ball out of the ballpark anywhere, left, right, center. Tadlock thought about moving him to short sooner, but was hindered with a leg injury. Take fastball inside. Two and one. They just don't realize that how next Monday their life will change for Josh Young. Whenever everything goes according to plan for Texas Tech, it'll be a day off for the Red Raiders. 
Yeah, you don't want to play that seventh game in a regional. A double elimination format in this part of the postseason. And a seventh game, if necessary, would come Monday. Hard liner to short and past Martin into left field. Smoked off the bat, the frozen rope gives Young a chance to stand at first. So first in the Big 12 regular season, eliminated by West Virginia in the tournament semifinals. First time they'd gotten that far since winning the whole thing back in 1998. And they're hosting for the fourth straight season, the only team in the country that can say they're doing that. Cameron Warren takes ball one. It says a lot about Tim Tedlock and his coaching staff and what they've done here just to take it to that next level. You put yourself in just a category alone. That's saying something about your program. That line drive by Young's shortstop, Trey Martin. He got by him before he even moved. That ball was hit hard. Reaction time would have had to have been lightning quick to be able to make a play on that. Warren takes the 2-0, hits it a mile high and a mile foul down the left field line, 2-1. and one. He got the head out on 2-0. That's for sure. Loves to chew on the ring from a water bottle. Yeah. When you unscrew it. I saw a picture of it. <laughs> you see the, the green I think that yesterday you had a... a a, a, a dental floss, one of those plastic dental the floss flossers. Picks. Yeah. BP. I guess they do make them in peppermint, spearmint. Okay. It works. Two two pitch. It hard down the left field line. Back to back base hits for Texas Tech. Big turn for Young as he goes for third and the throws off target. Bobbled by Jakeen on the back side of the play. Warren takes second base and it's runners at second and third with two away. Josh Young taking a chance right there. Ball not hit extremely hard, but good enough to get down the line. For Josh Young with the play in front of him, he sees the ball cut off out there by Walden. If a, this throw is anywhere online, Josh Young is out at third. So back-to-back -back singles for Young and Warren. Brings up Cody Masters with a chance to extend this first inning lead. Center field, Herdebees charges, it drops in front of him. Young is in, Warren scores behind him. Three, nothing, Red Raiders. Two balls hit hard, and then one not hit hard at all off the end of the bat. Floats it out in front of Herdebees in center field with two outs. Warren was off with the swing. Young scores easily. Red Raiders have jumped up 3-0. Left fielder Kurt Wilson at the plate is the seventh batter of the inning. Keep in mind this damage has been done the last two runs and three to reach base, all with two out. Wilson moving into a bigger role this year after starting just 14 games a year ago. Gets his 14th start today. down 3 nothing in the first. Just the second Power 5 opponent they faced this year. The other was LSU. All the way back in the second game of the season. Hung tight. Lost 6-5. to five. The only other time that these teams have squared off. You've got to go back 11 years 
to 2008. 30th pitch of the inning coming up for Burgraff. Odds are in their favor for Texas Tech when they score in the first. Ability to put up a three spot and get the job done with two out. The inning started with a triple down the right field line from Gabe Holt. Some courageous base running from the Red Raiders. 3-2 pitch. Line down the right field line and foul. Titus just a beat late getting over there. Trying to get Army out of the inning. Courageous would be a good way to put the base run. It took some guts, right? <laughs> yes, it did. I mean, not the fastest of foot is Josh Young. And if he makes the third out right there, it's still just the one nothing ball game. He took a chance. And it worked out for, te for Texas Tech. Another try on the 3 2. There will be at least three payoff pitches for Burgraff and Wilson. And this is where they played their best baseball this year 25 and 6 at home during the regular season. They've always been tough, even before they became an elite program. Usually breezy here. Used before the Astro turf, the field turf was in. The field was hard. Very offensive games when you played here against the Red Raiders. When you're pitching, how much did you think about which way the wind was blowing? First thing you looked at when you showed up to the ballpark throughout my career. I mean, you knew. When you walked in, you look at the flag right now, the center field flag's not moving at all. But if that thing was blown, you knew at Wrigley most of the party was blown out. Swing and a miss. Ball goes to the backstop. The rebound to Ceruto, and the throw to first ends the inning. First strikeout for Burgraff, but Texas Tech strikes three runs. Even when you know you're going to be in the postseason, the reaction, nevertheless, is still one of euphoria for Army. Watching the selection show, finding out they'd be making the long trip. And for some of them, it was even longer than they knew it would be to get from New York down here to Texas. And they start things off with a big swing from Trey Martin toward left field. Just a couple of steps for Kurt Wilson, four up and four down. Trying to get to Micah Dallas early. A couple of one-pitch outs. They got a win last year in that Raleigh Regional against NC State. That was another one versus four matchup. But then they were eliminated. It's a double elimination format with back-to-back -back losses against Auburn. Putting themselves back on track to see NC State once again. I was at those games in 2009 when they beat Boston College and Texas State. That was in Austin. They had Texas down to the ropes. Preston Clark hits the grand slam to walk them off to win the regional. McKenna sends Holt a few steps over. Well, this is a nice start for the freshman Dallas, who was a homeschool baseball player as he grew up here in Texas. And one of the best attributes that Tim Tadlock, his head coach, says that he has is the upbringing behind him, a great family. And when you bring a player into a program, you're making a long-term commitment. And he knew that the support system that Micah Dallas had, coming from a strong family background, would go a long way for him. And he says that translates into the composure he has on the mound, that nothing really rattles him. Yeah. Composure, discipline, very competitive when he's on the mound. But I think when you talk about discipline, you look at that Army team is going to have a lot of discipline. Really uses a, that lower body. Reaches out there real strong with those legs. 1-1 to Adams, rolled to third. 
and it's another one, two, three inning. Six up and six down. Just a couple weeks away from one of the most fun times of the year, the College World Series in Omaha. And it starts at 16 sites around the country. Here in Lubbock, Texas, bottom of the second inning as Texas Tech has a 3-0 lead on Army West Point out of the Patriot League, their postseason tournament champions. Texas Tech, the Big 12 regular season champions, and the number eight national seed, number one seed, here in the Lubbock Regional. But Texas Tech str struggled early in Big 12 play and then, what, won 10 of their last 11 to win that regular season championship. Started coming together at the right time of the season. When you talk about turning points, you could look at a couple different ones. Tim Tadlock targets the 14th of April. That was when they moved Josh Young from third base to shortstop. But you could also then go to their next series against Baylor. They took two out of three, rattled off six straight wins with a canceled game mixed in there against New Mexico. And they won their final four Big 12 regular season series with a couple of sweeps mixed in there as well. Long wait out in left field. Walden makes the grab. And there's one away. Sweeps over Oklahoma State, which at the time was number 16 in the country, and then against Oklahoma, took two out of three against TCU. And went to the semifinals of the Big 12 Conference Tournament. Braxton Fulford, the number nine hitter for the Red Raiders with one out and nobody on. As Texas Tech has jumped out to this 3-0 lead. Some other scores that'll catch your eye from around the country. How about, you know, Arizona State did not finish the season exceptionally well. Top of the ninth right now. They're down by 13 runs against Southern Miss, the number three seed in that regional. Nebraska looking to put away UConn up 8-5 to five and a big output from the Huskers with eight runs, more than they scored in their previous two NCAA tournament trips, which was six. Fulford is retired, two up and two down, and it's three straight going back to the end of last inning for Daniel Burgraff. It's the first of two games here today. The one versus the four seed, and the loser of this game goes on to the loser's bracket tomorrow, facing elimination at 1 Eastern, 12 local time. And we'll have a very intriguing matchup later today with Dallas Baptist out of the Missouri Valley Conference and Florida out of the SEC, which by many prognostications was close to not making it. Diving try in left field. Walden can't hang on. Holt into second base standing up. Would have been a beautiful play to secure a 1-2-3 inning, but instead Holt is in scoring position for the second time. The ball hit on a line. Take a look at Holt right here. The big leg kick stays right on it. Ball slicing back to Walden. Just comes out of his glove. A great effort out there in left field. Just can't hang on to it. Timing was good. The execution left some to be desired for Walden, especially Burgraff on the mound, who had a difficult first and a long first inning. And sees the freshman Otremba again, who last time he came up had Holt on third after a leadoff triple. Got him home with a sacrifice fly to center field. Two at bats for Holt now, a triple and a double. First two innings.
liner to left. Stop sign at third for Holt. Otremba has his first hit of the afternoon. And it's runners at first and third. Another two-out rally is in the works for Texas Tech. Yeah, Bergraff getting ahead of the first two hitters in this inning. Got them out. Has fallen behind. Tremble just muscled that one. And there's a lot of muscle to work with yes, in that frame is. for the right fielder. Climb the second baseman 0 for 1. Bullpen is full for Army. No one throwing at the this time. Now 50 pitches for Burgraff. Everybody enters with fresh arms, but the team that's going to come away the winner of this regional, whether it's Sunday or Monday, will be the one with the most well-rested arms, most likely. Ball and a strike to Klein. Out of Keller, Texas, whose parents have their educational roots in western New York. His dad, Brian, graduated from Canisius, and mom, Melissa, graduated from the University of Buffalo, where it may still be snowing as we approach June. First and third here after two straight outs to start the inning. Holt at third with a double, Otrumba at first. Single that follow. And there have been a couple of plate appearances already here as they make their way through the lineup for the second time where they've made Burgraff throw a lot of pitches. If they're not seeing what they want, they foul it away. Wait for something more opportunistic. They got the, the strikeout of Wilson to end the first, but just hasn't had that put away pitch. A lot of foul balls. He brings the 2 2. A tremble's on the run. 90 feet later, he's got to retreat to first base. Outside of Holt at third, there's not a lot of stolen bases. Either secured or attempted in this starting lineup. Otremba tied for the next most with two. Holt ahead of him on the base is 25 for 28 this year. Pitch to see if Coach Tadlock decides to take that off. Gave him a little breather on that one. Burgraff with his 56th pitch of the afternoon. Texas Tech lead, a gapper into left center. It gets all the way to the wall. Let's see what kind of speed Otremba's got around third. Enough to get him home on the double for Brian Klein. Five nothing Red Raiders. Otremba was not off. This ball, you see, Ceruto goes down to block it. Klein barrels it up. Gets out in the left center. He's in no man's land. Just takes a skip off the turf. Gets to the wall. With that, Holt will score easily. And Otrimba will motor around from first. One of the hardest outs in the country. Josh Young with two out. 
So of the five runs they've scored so far, four of them have come with two out. It looked like as that ball took a trip into the gap in left center field, it may have, the speed of the ball may have caught Herdebees a little off guard with the route he initially took, and then he saw the ball was going a lot faster to the wall. I think the swing, the ball was, <laughs> you saw the catcher go down to try to, to go to block it. I don't think he thought it was hit as hard as it was, and then it hit the turf and just took off. The action begins in the Army bullpen. This is the catch 22 here. You pitch around Young with the base open to have Cameron Morin up next. I got to try to walk them both. Take your chances. You'd walk them both. Well, I mean, just saying, they both they both can swing the bat. Three and one. On the co-player of the year in the Big 12 a couple of years ago, the Big 12 freshman of the year and a freshman All-American. Hammers that foul down the left field line. Look out. You didn't the, park over there, did you? Might hit the truck. <laughs> Not my truck. <laughs> TV truck. It's another pitch away from getting out of this inning as he was against Klein. 2-0 breaking ball, then 3-1 breaking ball. Let's see if he tries to go back to it right here. It helped him get out of the first. 3-2 to Young. That's high toward left. Walden to the warning track. Young just misses on one, leaving the yard. And Texas Tech tacks on two more. A nickel for Texas Tech. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. After two innings, Texas Tech, the number eight national seed with a 5 nothing lead over the Black Knights of Army West Point. And it's been very smooth sailing on the mound for the freshman Micah Dallas. Base six batters retired them all over the first two innings. So he sees seven, eight, and nine here in the Army lineup in the third. Very efficient has been Micah Dallas. Throwing strikes, early strikes, getting some quick outs. Just 18 pitches now in this ball game. Compared to Daniel Bergroff, who has thrown 62. So that portends to make life a lot easier on the Texas Tech bullpen. If Dallas can continue to replicate that kind of a performance, here into the third and beyond, ahead one and two on the freshman catcher, Cam Ceruto, getting just his third start of the season. In the line of the short, takes Young airborne momentarily, seven up and seven down. Pump back liner, not hit too hard, but right at Young out of shortstop. Gagliardi still continues to throw in the Army bullpen. Could be the day for Bergra. Second baseman Tim Simos turn on the Jets going up the first baseline. Klein's throw retires him. So eight batters have come to the plate. Only two have had a ball leave the infield. Martin and McKenna back in the second. 
as Dallas goes to make it nine up, nine down. Three hitless innings. This pace is on for about a 90 pitch complete game. It would be a head coach's dream to get that kind of a performance from any pitcher, let alone a freshman, and save more veteran arms for freshman. later on trying to send somebody into the elimination bracket. Freshman in the first game of a postseason, his first postseason start of his college career. Regional start. Nobody wanted to get it. Craig Barron, home plate umpire, says, all right, I'll go get it. He is in charge. Yes, he is. Barron behind the plate. Kellen Levy at first, Mike Lusky at second, and Brandon Cooper rounds out the umpire in quartet at third. Throw to first, in time. Drake Titus. Can't break the string. Three perfect innings for Dallas. As we go here into bottom of the third inning, so far a great start for Micah Dallas. A couple of strikeouts in the first inning. And a big hit in the first after a sack fly from Tanner Otremba. Cody Masters with a two-run single up the middle to score Josh Young. Cameron Warren behind him. It's a three-run first for Texas Tech, a two-run second, and they've got a 5-0 lead here in the opening game of the Lubbock Regional. The winner of this game moves on to face the winner of our second game today, Dallas Baptist and Florida square off later. Two innings, a short start today for Daniel Burgraff as he turns things over to the senior, Mike Gagliardi. Senior. Turning it over to a senior. He's made eight appearances. This be his ninth. Seven of those have been starts. They were unsure, even yesterday, late in the afternoon, as to who exactly they'd send out as the starter. That's a big out to get Warren to start the last of the third for Gagliardi. Confident in a good number of their arms coming in, but we mentioned it had been a long trip for Army coming from New York down here to Texas. And longer than they had expected because they left campus around 5 o'clock in the morning to make their trip and thought they'd arrive, well, 12 or so hours later. Guess no. what? It wasn't the case. Well, you have to go through Dallas. Or Houston, if you were or more Houston. fortunate. But weather weather was not great in a lot of airports around the country for teams that were making their travel plans. Masters pops out to Martin, two up and two down. As we've got 16 sites working concurrently around the country for more coverage of the Division I ba baseball regionals and the interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Mike Cousins with Greg Swindell, three-time All-American at the University of Texas and a major league pitcher as well. Two up and two down for the second time in his many innings for Texas Tech. Kurt Wilson 0 for 1 with a strikeout. So as the Army team flew through Dallas, or at least they hoped to, they instead got diverted because of bad weather to Austin, waited there for a time, and then made the drive from Austin to Lubbock, unplanned. But sometimes that's the way it goes. For Coach Foster, though, he said, you know, these guys are so good with all that they go through and all of their training outside of what lessons we impart on them through baseball. Nobody complained. What's what's the little um, delayed plane going to do for you? They were ready to roll with it. No swing on the check, so it's two and two on the sophomore Wilson. Yeah, 
So with that long delay, Coach Foster didn't get to watch as much video as he would have liked. Said he wanted to do a little bit more of a breakdown before naming his starting pitcher, and that's how he landed on Burgraff. And given his accolades as a first-team Patriot League player, certainly makes sense that he'd be the guy to step onto the mound to start things off. Foster, the former Providence College baseball player, spent a good amount of time professional baseball as well before going into college coaching. I believe that me and Coach Foster have met before from a certain distance. 60 feet, 6 inches. That's inside. And it's ball four to Wilson. So as the story goes, I, I did check with you, although his memory seems to be a little bit better than yours. I faced a lot of different <laughs> I faced a lot of people in my career. He said that his first at bat in spring training was against you. That's what he said. I talked to him before the game today. He said, yeah, he was just sitting there, and all of a sudden the manager said, grab a bat, you're up. And he grabbed a bat, and I was happened to be pitching that day for the Minnesota Twins in spring training. Morrell cracks it into right field. He's got his first hit. So it seems like all Texas Tech has to do is just get two out, and that's where the magic starts. Two out in the first. They got a two-run single from Masters. Two out last inning, a two-run double from Klein. And two out here in the third, a walk and a single to set up Braxton Fulford, the number nine hitter. So you guys squared off Major League Camp. He even remembered the count. He said it was 3-1, and it was a fastball away. I go, well, he was facing me because he, that's usually what I threw, a fastball away. That's the bread and butter. But you got him out. I, I probably popped up to right. where he played his college baseball, Providence. It's one of those sad stories in college athletics where they discontinue the baseball program, which they did right before the turn of the new millennium. But now in his third season here. Is that the master writer? It's good costumery. Is that a word? Have to check on that one. 2 0. Fulford makes it back to back base hits. That's shallow enough that Wilson gets a green light around third, and he is in to score Texas Tech's sixth run of the game. Well, you called it. Get two outs. Go to Hacken, just a fastball away, shoots it through second and first. And with that, Kurt Wilson, who drew a walk with two outs, will come around to score. Easton Merle will make it all the way to third base. And it's first and third with two down. Costumery, by the way. I see you were, you were correct. A noun, <laughs> articles of costume, or the art of costuming. So would that fit with that costumery right there? I think that's perfection of the artist's costume. Perfection. Costumery at its finest. That's a that's a good slogan right there. Period, quotation mark. You're supposed to learn one new thing every day? I didn't know costumery I've, I've, was I've a now word. I learned my one and new thing. Not sure you knew either. I absolutely <laughs> did not. Shot in the dark. Holt up at the plate for the third time in as many innings. So now as they score yet another run with two outs, it's five of their six that have come across to score with two away. Holtz two for two. No surprise, you go back to the end of the Big 12 tournament in Oklahoma City, hosting a regional this weekend, by the way, due to bad field conditions in Stillwater. So it's the home 
of Oklahoma State for this weekend. A busy weekend in Oklahoma City with the Women's College World Series going on and then the Oklahoma City Regional. But the Big 12 tournament there is where Holt had a 31 game on base streak come to an end. First and third, and the 3-2. Diving stop by Adams at first. He beats Holt to the bag and ends the inning. Circle that play for the highlight reel at the end of the night. Beautiful play by Adams. Stretches out, gets to first. Beautiful afternoon for the start of a weekend of baseball here in Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech, the home school and the host for this regional. Taking on Army here in game number one, Dallas Baptist and Florida to come your way around 8 Eastern later on tonight. With Greg Swindell, my cousins, our entire crew, glad to have you with us here as Texas Tech has jumped out to a 6-0 lead over the first three innings. And it's back to the top of the lineup. A clean card so far for Micah Dallas as he's gone nine up and nine down. And what's made him so effective so far? Well, he's just going right out. He's had some quick outs. Three first pitch outs. He's really attacking the zone. Right now with just 30 pitches in the ball game and into the fourth inning now. I think just being aggressive in the zone. Got his two strikeouts in the first inning, back to back to end the frame. Found his success, getting batters to chase down in the zone. And hasn't had a ball leave the infield in the last four batters. Inside, what did that clip? Hit the got knee. A, got a, got a, that hit a couple of things. Heard a metallic clang. Maybe got a knee as well. And there's also the possibility that Herdebees didn't make enough of an effort to get out of the way. He should be out. Oh, so it got his leg, and then it got the mask of Fulford. So if it's an attempt to get hit, he should be out because there were two strikes. Did it look to you as though that was the case? It looked like he was he was getting ready to go into his load for his swing and then couldn't get out of the way. Oh, that's that back knee. See, he went forward. Umpires are going to get together. Talk about this one. It looked to me that that front knee went towards the plate. Not it, he, he did load up, but then the knee went a little forward. If that's the case, he's out. First review of the tournament. So to get a better look at this, chance to go to video review and have a look. So just to reaffirm, so you would call him out. It looked to me that that back leg went forward in an attempt to, to get hit with the pitch. So call on the field was stay in the box. If that's the case, you're out. And he's out. All right, you're one. We're going to keep the tally. You are one for one. One for one. On replay reviews this weekend. So the challenge coming from Coach Foster for Army, and her to be is, is out 10 up and 10 down now for Dallas. Well, if Dallas can successfully navigate his way through the top of this lineup again, that stymies a lot of opportunities for Army to create offense, where they've got all the speed at the top of the lineup, 
Guys who can wreak havoc on the base paths. And if he can keep them off, he's in a lot better shape. Foul ball for Walden. Transfer from Hillsborough Community College down in Florida. This is the time of the season for a team like Army and for a lot of the four seeds around the country where the type of things you did in February really come around to pay off, especially scheduling where they saw LSU early in the season. It's a one-run game. Is the only Power Five opponent that they saw. On the ground, a third, 11 in a row. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, the SEC network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage is also available through the guys who don't sleep on ESPN3, Matt Schick, Mike Rooney. And the bases loaded channel all coverage is available on the ESPN app. It's Jakeen who takes strike one. Good change up from Dallas right there, mixing it up. Good slider. Good arm action on the changeup and has the good fastball. Jakeen had a very strong offensive season, fifth in the country with 24 doubles, led the Patriot League, driving in 61, and was second only to his teammate Jacob Herdebees in the leadoff spot with 73 hits. Just a strike away now for Dallas, the freshman on the mound, from being 12 up and 12 down and getting himself through four innings with potentially fewer than 45 pitches. So he's thrown a couple in the dirt. And Couple times now to hitters on two strikes, trying to get them to chase that slider downstairs. Yeah, I mean sometimes you just hang on to it a little bit too long. That one right there, obviously just tried to get it in in the t brown turf, and did just a little too low. It's not presentable out of his hand. It's low from the get go. If he starts it a little bit higher, just gotta. Get your sights a little higher with that slider. Right now, 3-2. Got a challenge and go with the fastball. Swing and a miss. Strike three. He's got his fourth strikeout. Nobody's reached through four. When we come back, we'll chat with Army head coach Jim Foster. Texas Tech has a 6-0 lead over Army as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Black Knights head coach is Jim Foster in his third season. want to give you an opportunity to praise your guys because you told this story yesterday. But before you get to that, that's at the end of the story. Your travel here is why they deserve praise. <laughs> yeah, it took us a while. What was that journey like? Well, we left about 5 in the morning. And then um, we, we were on two different flights. We were on Southwest and United. Half the group went. United, and they made it in okay. They got here about uh, 8.30, I would say. Um, the other group, we had to, we got a little sideline. We went to Dallas and waited around for a while. Then we got sent to Austin. We sat around on the runway for a while. And then when we pulled up to the gate, I said, guys, all right, we're getting off here. And, and uh, we found half of them flights, and the other the other half we drove here. So we, we got here about 11, 11.30. And Coach, no complaints, which was impressive. Coach Daniel Bergroff, you're all Patriot League. You're senior. What did you see out of him today? Yeah, he didn't have his best stuff today. You know, Danny's um, one of those guys that he's all heart when he goes out there and pitches. He, he really does. 
leave it out there. Um, you know, he does have better stuff than what he showed today. He just didn't have it. You know, I felt felt bad for him, but he's facing a really good team, some good hitters. You you really got to make your pitches against these guys. And, you know, he missed some spots, and, and they got some guys on and, and made them pay, especially with two outs, a lot of two-out damage. Joe Santoro comes in here. What should we expect to see from him? Joe's been pretty good. He's got a live arm. You know, we're still working on his command, but he's got a live arm. Upper 80s, he'll touch 90, and pretty much fastball slider. But um, right now he's a thrower. We're trying to get a, harness his uh, stuff a little bit, but he's got a good arm. Excited to see what he can do here. Jim, we appreciate the time. Thank you. Okay, thanks for having me. So Army has also given us word that they want to make sure they have as many arms available later on in the weekend. If they are able to be victorious, you get later into the regional round. So they're kind of bullpenning it here today. We saw Burgraff for two, Gagliardi for one in the third, and Santoro, who's already shown off that nice slider here against Tanner Otremba to start off the last of the fourth to get to a two-strike count. Burgraff with only 62 pitches. Yeah, if you make it to Sunday, it should be enough time to be able to bounce back. Well, you've got to come into it as an optimistic thinker, right? Plan to win it. Or Tremba has his second hit. Leadoff man is on here for Texas Tech for the second time in four innings. Klein, one for two with that two-run double back in the second inning. Texas Tech, the 6 nothing lead. When you talk to Tim Tadlock, their head coach, deservedly so, Josh Young, who waits on deck, is a guy who gets a lot of attention, projected to be a first-round draft pick come Monday when the Major League Baseball draft starts. But what he wants people to know about his team is that it's not just about one player or two players, that there are so many great components of this team that make them as good as they are. So he made the comparison to Patrick Mahomes when he was playing college football. He's like, he said, you know what? Our fans recognize what they have when they have it. They know greatness when it's in their presence. And it feels like that's the type of team this is. They were the regular season champions in the Big 12. And you're as good as you are in a lineup by the people that are around you. I mean, Brian Klein bats in front of Josh Young, has more hits, has 71 hits, and is batting 326. He's seeing good pitches because they don't want to get to Josh Young. Well, now Josh Young sees good pitches because they don't want to get to Cam Warren. He's batting 360 behind him. So when you're surrounded by hitters, I mean, it's good for everyone. Line fouls it away, two and two. And then you have you have to be able to hit in those situations. You know, anybody you can say, well, anybody can bat behind a Josh. Well, no, you still have to get the hits when you're in that spot. Klein, the second baseman, played last year in the outfield as the DH, and then the last portion of the season, a couple weeks at second base, which is where he was primarily his freshman season. When he made just 21 starts. Today, getting his 57th, and he gives this ball a ride to center field. Herdebees takes it all the way to the track, and he dropped it. So his throw comes in, and the call in center field. Called him out. They called him out. So they say it's on the transfer. So Trimba did not see it was the third base umpire. Brandon Cooper had ran out to his position. Oh, yeah. Certainly on the transfer. And it is on the transfer. Cooper had his hand in the air. He was calling him out. But you, Now, did they call Trimba out at first base? Yeah, it's a double play. Okay. So he, he hung around at second base for, until somebody was going to tell him to clear the field. And it ends up as a double play and a long fly Almost 400 feet to center field. I think Otremba may have been looking as where my eyes were was on the second base umpire. Who was on the infield. 
going out at the end of that play. to Young. I suppose this is optimally where you would face Young is with nobody on base in front of him. Yeah, well he's in scoring position in the box. But so far they've scored five of their six with two out. The only one that didn't come that way was Tanner Tremba, who was just doubled off. His sacrifice fly in the first. And Young doesn't see anything worth swinging at. So he draws the walk. So among players in regional action, see Young right there in the middle. And perhaps could end up in Arlington with the Rangers. Adley Rushman out of Oregon State, presumed by just about everyone to be the number one overall pick. There's a nice article this week on our colleague Ben McDonald, former number one pick mm -hmm. with Baltimore, about what it was like to be the number one pick and how much pressure comes with that. There's pressure. He was up in Baltimore later on after that draft pick, too. The same year. I think there's more pressure now because it's more publicized. Back then, you know, we had, well, back when I got drafted, you waited for a phone call. <laughs> you just right. waited, waited for the landline to call your house. You didn't have the draft on television. You didn't have the computers looking up what where you might be. You just had word of mouth. Things have changed. A lot more exciting for these kids to grow up and Kind, kind of know. I guess the first few picks you really do know where you're going to go. And at that point, if you're going to be taken that early, you've been facing questions on that for quite some time, too. Oh, yeah. 2-0 and oh on Warren. A couple of pitches have escaped Santoro. His first pitch to Young went all the way to the backstop, and that was too far out of the reach of Ceruto, who urges him to calm down as he falls behind 3-0. and Another one that gets right by Ceruto there. Not a tough one, but didn't get in position to block it. A lot of times now off the turf, it's easier just to backhand it like an infielder would. Doesn't come up with that one. Wild pitch, charged to Santoro. But let's just recall what a few moments ago his head coach told us. Is, he said he's still more of a thrower than he is a pitcher. He's trying to harness it, he said, yeah. And you can see he got the two outs. got the, the loud fly ball to center to get the double play for the two outs. But since then, hasn't been able to find the zone. And Coach Foster going to walk out and talk to his pitcher. A lot of it is is when you, when you have a good arm, most of it is mental. It's just concentration on the mound. Plus, last two hitters in the box can make you not want to throw a strike too often. Foster's a very easygoing guy. Shades of a Rhode Island accent when you hear him speak. In his third season, now at Army, Jacob Cart starts to get warmed up in the Army bullpen. Former head coach at Rhode Island for nine seasons and spent two seasons as an assistant at Boston College as well. Ten years in the minors for him. Made it up to AAA, the Orioles, the Diamondbacks, the Angels, the White Sox. It's a great guy to be able to teach players at this level with so much experience as a player and as a coach under his belt. It's one of those things you can't help but come away impressed from folks, whether from any of the academies. And that's one of the things now, even in his third season, nearing the end of that third season, talks about just how great K 
character guys his players are. That's why when you talk about a 15-hour day to get down here, it doesn't doesn't hurt the kids. 1-0 is cracked foul down the right field line by Masters. And that's all the coaches speak before the start of this regional. Yesterday, they get up on the dais, and Tim Tadlock said, hey, Memorial Day is when we find out who we're playing, an Army, and everything they're going to do for this country. Now and when they get out of school, you can't help but have a great level of respect for those players. First and second against Masters, two away in the last of the fourth. Ball's in the dirt, bounces away from Ceruto. And now it's second and third for Texas Tech. Young to third, Warren trails him to second base. Second wild pitch of the inning for Santoro. coming in from first he makes the grab with the sun in his eyes the inning is over great start for Texas Tech their head coach Tim Tadlock joins us when we come back Texas Tech at home up 6-0 as we go to the fifth head coach Tim Tadlock when we spoke yesterday you talked about how your team is so much more than just the names that get a lot of attention and so far we've seen that today with contributions from the mound and just about everywhere through the lineup. Yeah, that's true. Very true. I mean, Mike is, you know, obviously he's the only guy that's pitched today, but there's some guys one through nine that can handle the bat, separate balls and strikes. Now, how special is it for a guy, for you, especially to have a guy like Micah Dallas, who you can, he's a freshman. He's out here starting the first game of regional. Yeah, pretty cool. Old Denton County boy right there. <laughs> Tim, thanks. Okay, thanks, guys. So Trey Martin in the cleanup spot here against Micah Dallas, the Denton County boy. And he is the first to reach base today. A breaking ball that gets away from Dallas. Martin hit by that pitch. It had been 12 up and 12 down for Dallas. Still not a lot of base hit. But that's the first base runner of the afternoon for Army. The mistake is a lot easier to to swallow there for Dallas given the six run cushion the offense has provided yeah, well, I think he is just the fifth and I think he knew how he's throwing the baseball that he's throwing the ball pretty good no one had reached base now it's be interesting to see how he is from the stretch now you got a runner on and has not thrown from the stretch today for those of you watching Denton County is up there by Dallas Oh, with a line like that, you can live with the one-hit batsman, that's for sure. As McKenna stands in here. The junior from Florida, back-to-back -back swings and misses. Fifth strikeout for Dallas. Didn't let the hit batter get to him, but watch the ball. This thing just disappears. Tough to pick up the spin on the ball. Comes out of his hand like the fastball. That is a tight slider right there. Jeremiah Adams out of Mattapoisett, Massachusetts. 
Started off his career in 2017 at the University of Oklahoma. Played in 15 games. Then ventured to junior college, Broward Junior College. And he started every game he's played in this year. Number 56 today. Rounded out to third his first time up. Have you noticed any difference for Dallas with a runner on base? No. I mean, I, I think after the hit batter, it, it made him mad, so he took his aggression out on McKenna. And right now, just release point, and that's what it is. When, when you've thrown from the windup the entire ball game, and now you throw from the stretch, it's a little different. first base runner came with Martin who ventures to second base his first walk to Adams and brings up Cam Ceruto the freshman catcher Ceruto getting just his third start of the season today. Throw to second. Blake Ledoux has been one of the primary backstops this year for Army, a 248 hitter who started 32 times. Healthy, just not in the starting lineup today for the Black Knights. Down 6 0 here in the top of the fifth. Had some well struck balls. Go back to the second inning. Martin McKenna back to back. Both had hard flies, but just about straight away to Wilson and left and Holt in center field. That's the throw Young wanted the first attempt down to second base. First attempt was on the second base. First base side of second base. That one a little better. Might have had a shot at him the first time. Went to call timeout and didn't hit it. Had to get his hand back on the bat. Best opportunity today for Army. A little bit of a crack in the armor here for Micah Dallas. It was perfect through four, has struck out five. And it's lined to third, caught there, throw to second, not in time. Nearly an inning ending double play. Morrell was ready for it. Otherwise, it could have gone for extra bases. And there are two down. Army still hitless. Third base is just reaction. Ball's hit hard, catches that after it goes by him, then wherewithal to make a perfect throw to second base. Good job down there by Martin to not get be able to get back to the back. What a play right there. Matt Hudgens is the pinch hitter here for Army as he steps in in place of Tim Simos at second base, who was 0 for 1, with a ground out to second. First and second for Army. With Hudgens looking to get their first hit of the day after Morell denied them that opportunity. Saved at least one run with that play down there at third.
Through the first four innings, it had been about 10 pitches an inning for Dallas. On pace to average about 12 through the first five as he's a strike away from finishing off this frame. Slider has been the out pitch for him. See if he tries to drop this one on the plate or back leg him. Five strikeouts for Dallas. Sixth, not just yet. So it seems like the Army hitters have started to expect with two strikes that ball is going to be real low. Yeah, until you start to lay off it, you keep throwing it, and they've done a good job the last inning or so to lay off that one at least for now. Dallas with a 2-2, gets the swing and the miss. And strikeout number six puts away Army in the fifth. Their first two base runners, but still scoreless. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals, presented by Capital One. Here's a look at our bracket, Texas Tech with the lead over Army here. As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, up 6-0 our next game. Dallas Baptist and Florida. Missouri Valley meets SEC. Be a good one there. It's Dallas Baptist, great pitching, great offense. Florida, great offense. The pitching has been harder to come by for them this season. Mike Cousins along with Greg Swindell, the three-time All-American at the University of Texas. World Series champion, among many other things. Back here in Lubbock, where the weather is beautiful, the temperature is fantastic, the crowd is just about at capacity, and Texas Tech has come to play so far. Here as they come to the plate for the fifth time. A couple of wild pitches last inning for Joe Santoro, third pitcher been, of the day it could have been for the Army. The wildest. That was, that was a little wide right there. He did hold the Red Raiders scoreless last inning and starts off with a grounder to short that Martin throws high to first and it's pinpointed by Adams who gets the right toe onto the bag and secures the out. A couple of good plays on that end by Adams. You see him go up to get it. Yes, he came back down on the bag. Good thing down there, Wilson avoiding collision. One away for Easton Morrell. Josh White comes in to play second base for Army after Matt Hudgens was a pinch hitter. Struck out to end the top of this inning, replacing Tim Simos, who started the game at second and had one at bat. Morrell has seen more playing time as of late at third base. You go back to the middle of last month, starting tomorrow, we'll have to say the middle of April, as we venture our way into June. When they moved Young from third towards short. And so it hasn't been a consistent starter out there, but Morrell has been in the mix as the starter at third base, something they had wanted to do probably about five or six weeks prior to when they actually did it because of an injured hamstring that Young had. And in the words of Tim Tadlock, he was effectively playing on just one leg over at third. Certainly the challenges of mobility would become much more apparent at shortstop than they are at third base. 3-2 pitch, that came up and hit him on the shoulder as Morrell turns out of the way. So it's a one-out base runner for the Red Raiders in the last of the fifth. Santori has been all over the place. Held him scoreless in the fourth, but had a couple of walks, and now it's Morrell right there on the shoulder.
Braxton Fulford, the eighth batter, faced by Santoro. He's got a base hit into the gap left center. So far, every opportunity to take the extra base, Texas Tech has done just that. Holt with a triple to lead things off in the first. In the second, they did it again. And here, two bases on one swing for, for Morrell. Ball right down the middle. Takes it over the shortstop, Martin. But the aggressive base running, Balt plays in front of him. Recognizes the ball gets over the shortstop. And that's one thing, you, I mean, you teach that. You try to pound that into players. And be aggressive on the base pass. And it's paid off today for Tech. And that's a way where I don't know that you necessarily file it under intangible of being a smart base runner, but where you can make an extra impact on the game. Look, he didn't need a base hit to get on, and now he finds himself at third, and a fly ball scores the game's seventh run for them. Understanding the game, understanding how to play the game. Like you said, you don't have to get... Just because you didn't get a hit, you still have the ability to use your legs, and he did that right there. He only came into this game with 15 at-bats, 3 for 15, to start the NCAA postseason for the sophomore. So far, he's been perfect in getting on base. A single hit by the pitch. He's got Fulford over first base and Holt. Who's got a triple and a double and scored a couple of runs at the plate. Winner here sees the winner of our second game today. It'll be Dallas Baptist taking on Florida. Very experienced, senior-laden pitching staff for Dallas Baptist. A powerful squad, top 25 in the number of home runs they hit this year. An unusual down season for Florida. Not the best that they've had in the last dozen years, but finding their way with the strength of a late season sweep against Missouri, which ended up being one of the last four teams left out by the NCAA selection committee. Florida lost them pitching to the draft and had some pitching injured this year, and some of them are getting, making their way back now. So something that they need in this regional tournament. They're looking, what, a fifth straight trip to home. A trip to Supers. Yeah, I forgot about that. You gotta go there first. <laughs> <laughs> Runners at every base here for Texas Tech. Morell at third, Fulford at second, Holt at first, and the freshman Tanner Otremba steps up for the fourth time. wondering how long he would stick with Centaur here. And looks like that question may be answered. Coach Foster on his way out to the mound. Bases loaded. And one out. Got the first out of the inning. Wilson close play at first base since then. Hit by pitch. A walk. And a base hit. Anthony Larico. In the bullpen for Army. He's been warming for probably about the last seven or eight minutes throughout the course of this inning. So decision time comes as Craig Barron, the home plate umpire, assumes his spot out on the mound. And we do have a pitching change. So Santoro is out. Lorico is in. And a tough spot here with the bases loaded and one down. Last of the fifth, back in 60 seconds. It's been a bullpen day for Army as they're down 6 nothing in the bottom of the fifth inning. One down and the bases are loaded. Joe Santoro gives way to Anthony Larico, the freshman out of Massachusetts here. With the heart of the order coming up, it's a tall task and a difficult ask 
for Larico. A very tall task for Larico. 42 innings this season. 38 strikeouts of law and legal studies major for Army. Just to figure out how to get out of this one right here in a big jam. Bases loaded for Tech. Texas Tech already with six on the board. To use a legal term, see if he can marshal his way out of this and hold Texas Tech scoreless for a second straight inning. The Patriots of Dallas Baptist are on hand. They'll see Florida later on tonight. Scheduled start time of 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern. It will also be available on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. So if you're out and about tonight, it is Friday after all. It is. Take your phone. Take your tablet. Don't be ashamed to sit in the restaurant with your phone up. It's not rude if you don't think it is. You Watch can, some baseball. You can leave it on and set it on the table. So bases are full. First pitch swinging. A hard shot to get a couple of runs in. Morrell scores the first. Fulford's behind him. Holt stops at third. And Otremba plates two. 8-0 Texas Tech. Not too much from Otremba right here. Just pounds it in the turf out in front of home and gets it. By Joaquin, over his head, pops over his head, gets down and almost in the corner in left field. A couple of runs score and have a couple of more in scoring position. Well, here's why this team is so dangerous. The ability to produce runs from anywhere in the lineup for Texas Tech. They're on pace right now to win 17 of their last 21 games. You factor it the way that it's scored, and you add on the run total for today. It's 156 to 61. So almost outscoring the opposition by 100 runs in 20-plus games. One one turned foul by Klein. Who had a two run double back in the second. So we just added the, the math a little bit to add the eight runs for today. But 16 of their last 20, and you add the eight on to that. The numbers are just remarkable. Winning 10 of their last 11 in conference. And the Big 12 regular season title as well, eliminated by West Virginia. And no shame in that, as the Mountaineers have parlayed a great season into hosting a regional in Morgantown this year. That's what makes it so great. You can have your struggles early in the season, but if you get hot like this Texas Tech team has, they, they won their way into a number eight seed nationally to be able to host a region here at home and possibly a super regional if they win this one. And they'd meet up with the winner of the Oklahoma City Regional, so potentially a rematch if Oklahoma State emerges the victor among the four teams there of their regular season series. That was a three-game sweep for Texas Tech over the Cowboys. Two two is a swing and a miss. Strike three. And there goes Klein for the second out of the inning. Really good changeup. Lobico right there. Sorry, side arm comes from a different angle. Got some depth on it, that changeup. Threat's not over yet because Josh Young is the batter. He walked last time up in the fourth. Just missed hitting one to the moon in the second. So Army has yet to get a base hit. They've had two on 
But Micah Dallas, the freshman, has flummoxed them so far. Meanwhile, Texas Tech hitting an out of this world 500 and 750 with two out. Where they've scored five of their eight runs. Well, that's demoralizing for any team when you're one out away from getting out of it. Now, all of a sudden, you look at the scoreboard, you're down to six nothing, and five of them have come with those two outs. And everybody, one through nine on the lineup card for Tim Tadlock, has a base hit with the exception of Kurt Wilson, the number seven hitter. The sophomore is 0 for 2, but he still has come around to score after he walked in the third. So everybody's been productive. Shift goes on to the left side of the infield. No impact for Young, who hasn't seen much of anything to swing at in his last two plate appearances. Cameron Warren comes into this regional. Division one or D1Baseball.com says the best hitter in this regional. Senior on this roster. We had five leave last year. Six more went pro. He got drafted in the 39th round out of high school. And has done a lot to make a name for himself this year. So when they had senior day here, they took it seriously. But just one senior. The count doesn't get to Cameron Warren. He's a pure hitter. Very seldom chases balls out of the zone. Takes the 0-2, pounds it into the ground. A long way to go for Jakeen at third. But the Red Raiders leave the bases loaded. Not before they get two more. They take their 8-0 lead to the sixth. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. So far, a very one-sided affair between Texas Tech and Army. Eight runs, 12 hits for Texas Tech. Just two base runners for Army. As the Black Knights come to the plate here in the top of the sixth in search of their first base hit of the day. And they'll hope it'll start with Drake Titus, the sophomore right fielder. He's got speed as well. Put the ball in play. Can't hit one off the third, though. That's speed. Taylor made play down there for Morrell. Second time in as many trips to the plate that he's grounded out to third. So Dallas got his first appearance of the season February 24th against Kentucky. Didn't start his first game until March 21st against Michigan. But I think from that point on, it was a pretty clear indicator as he faced a postseason team there in Michigan. Went five innings, struck out seven, struck out six today already through five and a third. And he was going to have a good season. And the Big 12 All-Freshman team, a unanimous pick for that. And gets a big honor here by getting called on to start this game, but he's yet to allow a hit through five and a third. And the NCAA tournament hasn't seen a no-hitter in seven years. Base is grounded out to first and struck out. Liner up the middle, and that's the first base hit of the day for Army. Five and a third, no hit innings for Micah Dallas, and the crowd recognizes that immediately. Well, that was scary. 
I don't understand what, what was going on. You can smile about it now. What's this? Right back at Mike Dallas. Look out. Had the glove up. It's not a comforting feeling when you that's all you see is that ball coming right back at you. I think there was a, a moment of anguish where he said, all right, I'm glad I'm all right. And then immediate disappointment that he'd given up his first base hit. Also, it happens to be to the speediest member of the Army squad. Like I said, that's not a comforting feeling when the ball comes back at you like that. I got hit by a line drive on, the, on my thigh. I got hit by a line drive on my glove hand that broke my middle finger splinted it up cut the leather of the glove open and got my five in we had a big lead I wanted to get five <laughs> in get the win against the Red Sox about the only time I beat them and then one night I re all I remember was Harold Baines all I remember was his leg kick and then the ball hit me in the chest oh did you come out after that no I mean it, it dropped and didn't fall far from me I got him out but I, I didn't like facing Harold Baines anymore after that. What I, like, I want to know is when you take the shot off the chest, off the thigh, what does that spot look like when you wake up the next day? It's purple, yellow, dark color, <laughs> discoloration everywhere. How long does that last for? The one on the leg, you know, the leg, the gravity takes over and starts to spread, so your whole inner the thigh and knee start to have a little bleeding on it. The one off the chest just kind of bruised me real bad. I think it went through me. I, br I bruised on my back. Out to short. Young didn't have the out at second and doesn't have it at first either. Well, it had been a while since he'd fielded a live action ground ball with a runner coming from first to second. Herdebees with above average speed gets two runners on base here for Army. Well, both Herdebees and Walden, we talked about, what, 70 stolen bases between them, so they have wheels, and once Young did not have the throw to second, he was off balance and didn't get much on the throw to first. So it goes down as an error charged against the shortstop Young. Just goes to show you how difficult it is to work into the postseason and even flirt with a no hitter. Hadn't been one since 2012. Jonathan Crawford at Florida against Bethune Cookman in the postseason. And before that, there hadn't been one since 1991. Wow. And since 91, there hadn't been one since 74. <laughs> Nevertheless, for Dallas, the freshman, five and a third hitless and four perfect, really stands out. One and two on Jakeen. Yeah, he got halfway through the ball game, and we we're getting excited. Or I was. Anytime you're going to witness something rare, yeah, that's cool. You say twice since '74. That's right. Both by Florida pitchers, John Burke in 1991 and Jonathan Crawford in 2012. That smoked to center field, but Holt's got a beat on it. Herdebees thought about tagging up, but he holds. Jakeen is the second out of the inning. The best one hit off Micah Dallas today. That ball lined right at Holt center field. Brings up Trey Martin, who was the first Army player to reach base today. 12 up and 12 down through the first four. He got hit by a breaking ball that 
did not live up to its name and reached last inning. But nobody's gone past second for Army so far. That's hit well toward left. Wilson gives chase at the wall. It's off the fence. Herdebees comes around to score. Walden goes to third. And Trey Martin gets Army on the board. A two-out RBI double. Got a ball up in the zone right there from Micah Dallas. Everything right on time. Just misses a home run by a couple feet. It's in the net out there in front of the bullpen of Army. Right back to Wilson's holding them just a one run right there. You know what's been amazing about even the hard hit balls off of Dallas None of them have been to gaps. Certainly no hits before this inning, but you remarked about the liner that Jakeen hit to center field. Right. Even that was in the trajectory of Wilson out toward left field, just over his head. So the winner of this game moves on. They'll play tomorrow, 6 Central, 7 Eastern in the winner's bracket. The loser of this game is one loss away from elimination. That game tomorrow, noon central, one Eastern. So two games tomorrow, two on Sunday as well. Two teams hanging out. Second and third for McKenna. Another one, one swing of the bat, and cut it right in half. McKenna's hit just a home run this season. Their best power comes from Martin with seven home runs, who just hit that double off the wall and left. Young, the error earlier in the inning, this time with a penance for it. That ends the inning. The no-hitter is over, and Army's on the board. 8-1, to one, Texas Tech. 13th at 8-7 Central. Well, that'll be a great collaborative effort between Major League Baseball and the NCAA to have those two sports converge on the pinnacle of college baseball in Omaha. Right before the College World Series. Leading things off here in the sixth, Cody Masters with a pop out to Martin at shortstop. And it's been really cool to watch how Major League Baseball has expanded and tried to take its growth to non-conventional places, whether it's been Mexico. You've seen a couple games there this year, Japan, Australia, Fort Bragg a couple years ago, a military base down in North Carolina. I had the privilege of going to Williamsport, Pennsylvania last year uh, to watch the, I want to say it was the Mets and the Phillies. That's always neat. It was really yeah. cool. Yeah. I like it. Oh, go ahead. It's at a it's at a, a minor league ballpark. It's a short season ballpark. That is caught in center field. Wow! Herdebees came charging in on a sinking ball and makes the catch to save it from hitting off the turf. You know, off the bat, you think it's a base hit. Herdebees comes in, just gets the glove right underneath, and ball goes in. Good call. Great play out there by Herdebees in center. Two up and two down. And it's Morrell. But, yeah, the, the Major League Baseball expansion to other parks, and you're at a, you know, three or 4,000-seat venue for a team that plays from June to August where it's guys who are just coming in out of the draft in Pennsylvania. So Morrell sticks that down into the corner, turns first, and heads for second in with a double. And so you're at a ballpark full of Little League players. Presumably when you're in Omaha, you're going to see tons of college baseball fans, Major League Baseball fans. And it's not necessarily just going to be people traveling 
from the cities of those respective MLB teams. You'll have people converging from all across the country to see that. That's what what makes Omaha special is because you do see that. They have they have um, like little tournaments from little leaguers up there that are playing all around the area. And of course, the College World Series coming in right after that game. It's just a great time of year to be right there in the heart of America, right in Omaha. And we're in that time of June. It's the baseball capital of the world. Right now, we're at the baseball capital of Lubbock, Full House, to watch their home team up 8-1 to one and threatening again. Here in the bottom of the sixth. They've done a ton of damage. Five of their eight runs have come across with two outs so far. Three in the first, two in the second, one in the third, and two more in the fifth. One one to Fulford. Rico on the hill is the fourth pitcher of the afternoon for Army. They started with Daniel Burgraff, who gave them two innings, allowed five runs on seven hits. Mike Agliardi, an inning, one run. Joe Santoro, one and a third. Charged with two runs. Yeah, Bergdorf. Red Raiders are banging. They're just getting base hits. The last few innings have been some ineffective pitching. Walks mixed in with the big hit after the base runners have been on. Popped up the 2-2. Two -two. Ceruto gives it a quick look behind the plate. Not a lot of room behind home. Very close quarters. Which gives you a little bit more, I suppose, leeway on a ball in the dirt. If it does get away behind home, it's a quick skip off the turf, and the backstop is right there. Play rebound. Big swing and a miss, strike three. And the inning is over. No runs across for Texas Tech. They strand Morell at second. The story of the day has been all about Texas Tech. Their strong offense got up 5-0 after two. And Micah Dallas, who went four innings perfect, didn't allow a base runner till the fifth and didn't allow a hit until the sixth. He's been really good today. He's been aggressive in the zone. The slider has been outstanding pitch for Micah Dallas this afternoon and just gave up the hits last inning and the one run, but he has been outstanding for Tim Tadlock and the Red Raiders today. They were the regular season champions in the Big 12. Jeremiah Adams leading off in the seventh for Army, grounds out to third for the second time. And the leadoff man is down for Army here in the seventh. Cam Ceruto coming up. Still being aggressive. Quick outs, it kind of went away there in the middle innings, but like a Dallas stays with his game plan, gets a quick out. What you want in the middle innings. You get a lot of good action going around college baseball today as well. Some bad weather striking North Carolina right now. You got regionals at Chapel Hill, hosted by the University of North Carolina. In Greenville, in the eastern part of the state, hosted by ECU. Games right now in the bottom of the ninth inning, and they're stuck because of weather. Campbell leading NC State. That's a three versus a two right now. With Campbell up by a run, the number three seed over the Wolfpack. And UNCW, which last year went to Greenville, this year to Chapel Hill, up, or rather tied 6-6. Six, six against the host North Carolina in the bottom of the ninth inning. Check swing, and it's a foul ball. 
for the catcher, Ceruto, who will walk that one off. It follows the Camels around. Last year, they were in Athens. <laughs> had all the rain out there. And Duke, a number three seed, just pounced on top of Texas A&M in the top of the eighth on ESPN2, up eight to one. Wow. That's right, everyone here knows we like clear skies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One and two on Ceruto. Ouch. That got Fulford right on the open wrist. Mm. That'll make your wrist numb right there. Well, as the top seed in the regional, as the host, you've already got the advantage seating wise playing as the number one team versus the number four team but you look ahead here texas tech wins this game you have dallas who is going to throw his 85th pitch here how well they'll be set up pitching wise going on later into the weekend ceruto is retired he's over three and around the country the sec Matches an NCAA tournament record. Four in the top eight. Vandy, Georgia, Arkansas, Mississippi State. Texas Tech is the number eight seed. UCLA, number one overall for the second time. And Texas Tech trying to work its way back to the College World Series. Florida and Dallas Baptists meeting later on tonight. Gators just a couple of years ago, national champions. First ever for Florida. And a good story continues as well as Florida State, although when they're in the postseason, they're used to being regional hosts. One of the last four teams in in Mike Martin's final season. The legendary head coach there at Florida State. I went with my heart. I filled out my bracket. I picked Florida State to win. How how far did you all the I way? I got them to win it. All the I way. I got them going all the way. Yes, I had my first regional I ever did. I had was at Florida State, and first time I had ever met Mike Martin and what an outstanding man of his numbers is. I mean, the thing that gets me, yeah, the wins, forty plus for what thirty nine straight years. Because that's how you get two thousand twenty three wins. It's amazing. And I did a regional there, I want to say four years ago, with Eduardo Perez. And you go down and you talk to. He's a legend over there. Isn't he? He, oh, yeah. <laughs> the amount of swag that got brought into the booth yes. for him being at his alma mater, <laughs> remarkable. And you talk to Mike Martin for a guy who we had never met. And so welcoming, so nice, yep. so helpful. And no matter what walk of life you may find yourself in, the people at the top of their profession, the best to do it, are not always that way. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's in sports. It could be in business or whatever it might be. But to have that level of humility says so much for someone who has been so successful for so long. Well, there's no wonder the program has been successful for so long. And by the way, the, the 2,000 wins... No coach in any other sport in any NCAA record book has won 2,000 games of anything. Anything. Yeah, I was around the all-time winning as coach in Augie Garrido for a long time. I thought that was that was a lot. He, he inched up on close to 2,000. But to have over 2,000, the record, 39-plus, 40-plus every year. I mean, it's amazing. But the one he would trade 2,023 wins in for is, would be that ring. Sure. It's all about getting the ring. Foul of third. With Titus, the number nine hitter, looking to get aboard for the first time in three tries.
Josh White with a single against Dallas. Just the third hit of the day for Army as they got their first run last inning on an RBI double off the wall from Trey Martin. Oh, two tails away from Dallas. He tried to sell it out there. Ninety-five pitches now for Micah Dallas. He's put you in position right now. He's, I mean, more than you can ask for a freshman to go out there and get you in seven innings with one more out. Save the bullpen. You would think creeping up on a hundred that this could be it for Micah Dallas. Bullpen is active for the Texas Tech. Ryan Sublet throwing for the Red Raiders. May be able to put a cap on it. He should tip his under 100 pitches, seven innings, and a seven run lead. Texas Tech up 8-1. to one. They'll come to the plate here in the last of the seventh inning. Micah Dallas, don't know if his day is over at 99 pitches, but if it is, seven innings, three hits, and four perfect innings to start the day. That is a key to regional success right there for the host Red Raiders. Jacob Cart's the new pitcher here for the Army West Point Black Knights, the senior from Charlotte. Replaces Anthony Larico. So Cart is pitcher number five on the day after Larico went one and two thirds, second longest of anybody out there on the hill today for Army. Another senior coming out of that bullpen for Coach Foster. First pitch, Holt swings, flies it out toward right center. And at the warning track, it's run down by Titus. Holt started off the day the first two innings. And anybody who's watched the baseball game before, you're going, get the cycle watch going. Triple and a double in the first two innings. Almost a home run. Had the hard one, in my opinion, out of the way, that triple. But not with his speed. And probably easier for a triple than a homer. But on the season. Three homers and now three triples. Maybe the best offensive day, though, belongs to Tanner Otremba. He steps up here. Sack fly. Couple of singles. Two-run double last time up in the fifth. So you talk about the heart of this lineup. He's the number two hitter behind him. A couple of juniors and a senior with Warren. And the freshman has been phenomenal. Got the sack fly in the first. And a hit in the second. A hit in the fourth. A hit in the fifth. And all of his hits have been off three different pitchers. Hart deals a strike three and one. Guy who's worked out of the bullpen primarily in all four of his seasons at West Point. He's played his high school baseball for Grady Little. I've heard of that name. <laughs> the former major league manager. Played for. Him. Where? Boston. He's a coach. When I was there and then became manager. I got traded over there from Minnesota in 98. You guys got a couple stops in common on your resumes. Ball four to Otremba. So his great day continues. Manager of the Red Sox, 0203, and then the Dodgers, 0607. Native Texan turns 70 next year. When you heard him talk, you'd never know he's from Texas. 
<laughs> can't understand him. He's got such a drawl. <laughs> That was uh, an enjoyable part of conversing with Tim Tatlock. There is no doubt as to where he's from and certainly where he has a strength in recruiting. And that's in the state of Texas. But given how successful this program has been, the reach for him has been spread to all 50 states. <laughs> yeah. Because at a certain point, when you're building a program, You've got to say, hey, I need you to come play for me. I'd like you to come play for me. As the success comes, the trips to Omaha come. Players are saying, I want to come play for you. Yeah, it's, it's a great atmosphere. They, they kind of took their fans out of the game by scoring the eight runs in five innings. But hang on to win this ball game. That game tomorrow night it will be loud. You'll see a winner of our second game today, Florida and Dallas Baptist. Fly to left, Walden chasing, which is up and brings it home. Got to have the sunglasses on and looking into the sun makes a tough catch. Two outs this in for Carton, about 700 feet of real estate. <laughs> You got a lot of action going on, and for more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Duke is up after eight innings, eight to one over Texas A&M. It's been a struggle for the Aggies to score runs as of late. They won their opening game in the SEC tournament against Florida, as a matter of fact. A team we'll see later on here tonight in Lubbock. And in the 25 innings since then, AM has scored, well now 26 innings, scored one run over the span of almost three full games. Well, that puts pressure on your pitching staff. They have a really good pitching staff. Do the Aggies. And when you feel like you have to be perfect because you know you're not going to get much run support, then that's when you make mistakes and find yourself down like they are today. Shift is on here to the left side against Young. They put those three infielders over to the left side, but shade him a little bit to the right with Herdebees in center field. We've only been now in three straight plate appearances, back-to-back -back walks for Young. Maybe two or three pitches that have been ones you'd consider swinging at? Yeah, haven't been close. That last strike might have been a gift. That was a perfect pitch. Right there. gets the inside corner to go two and two. Phenomenal in the Big 12, praised because of the great speed of his bat. Co-player of the year in the Big 12. Son of a baseball coach as well. And he takes the 2-2, turns it into a parking lot souvenir. The ball really has to be in. You talked about the speed of his bat, the quickness of his bat. If you don't get it in there, he's going to hurt you. Fortunately for Cart right there, that one got in there enough to have him pop it foul. Into the shift, but deep into the hole, and Martin has no play on the shallow outfield grass. Young is aboard safely at first, and Otremba advances 90 feet to second base. Well, they gave Young an error in the field. Let's see how they treat him at the plate. Had to go in the hole to get that ball. A few steps to his right, came up on him, and unable to... Keep the handle on it. It's 
So the inning continues for Cameron Warren. Goes down as a base hit. I think with the difficulty of that play, even if it had been fielded cleanly by Martin, that's a long throw. That's yeah. a, the throw would have been able to get him anyway. Warren picked up a hit in his first at bat today. He's popped out, grounded out, and walked his last three times up. So everybody on this squad today is going to get five and perhaps for some six plate appearances. No shortage of opportunities to score, and Texas Tech has taken advantage. They get up 5 nothing after two, and they lead 8-1, threatening again here with two out in the seventh. A ton of base runners today. And that one's hit well, high and deep to left field. It is out of here. Cameron Warren's 14th home run of the season gives Texas Tech a 10 run lead. His 15th of the year. Can't shortchange the guy. Sooner or later. Nice and relaxed at the plate. More relaxed when he goes out and gets extension like that. He knew it as soon as it left the bat. A monster blast to left. Starts 0-1 against Masters. In on the hands. The reverberating baseball back to the mound. And the inning is over. But still, more runs with two outs coming across. This one of the long ball for Warren, who makes it disappear over the fence in left center. Cameron Warren with his 15th home run of the season, and it makes it a 10-run lead for Texas Tech into the eighth inning here in Lubbock. That now leaves Los Angeles as the only regional in the country out of 16 sites without a home run in its opening game. So balls have been leaving the yard at a prolific rate this year and today as well. After seven sparkling innings from the freshman Micah Dallas, sophomore Ryan Sublet takes over to pitch the eighth. Lamont, Illinois product. And his 13th appearance, the big lead to work with. Come in through strikes. We know that Army has been swinging the bat early, so if you go at them, get the quick outs and try to keep it at 10. Who wouldn't want that assignment? Keep it at 10. Keep it at 10. The Red Raiders this year are perfect when they carry a lead into the eighth inning. 34 and 0. And leading after seven. Top of the order here with Hurtabees, who had the first hit of the day. Baseball doubling as a guillotine back up the middle. Dallas had the dexterity to get out of the way of it. Just got the glove up and found its way into center field. Hurtabees came around to score Army's lone run on an RBI double from Trey Martin three batters later. So Hurtabees with that base hit extended his hitting streak to 16 games going back to the end of April. He was the best hitter in the Patriot League this year at 383. Had a monster Patriot League tournament as well. 12 for 23. And was the league's defensive player of the year. And he takes four straight outside the zone. Fitting for the guy who owns his school's single season walks record. Sublet not close with those four. Drops down about a little less than a three-quarter delivery. Tough to keep the ball straight. 
Through four wide ones all around 94 to 96 miles an hour. Got to find a way to get over the plate, though. Dallas walked just one over his seven innings. The one run, three hits, and struck out seven. So not only is he the single season walks record holder at Army, but also one of the best in the country this year in terms of getting on base and then making something happen when he does get on base. Coming into the game at 74 hits on the season, but 64 were singles, so he uses that speed when he gets on base. Into the hole, Young with a sliding try. He doesn't get it. You love the effort there from Herdebees as he comes around second base, too, doing exactly what Texas Tech has done today. And whenever the opportunity is there to take the extra base, take that opportunity. He put the pressure on Wilson, the left fielder, said, if you don't make this perfect play, I'm coming to third. Yeah, you never know. He's going to, if he takes any type of peak right there, might not come up with it clean. But that's how you still want to play the game. You're still, you're down 10 in the eighth inning, and you're still playing the game hard. He knows one gear. Back-to-back -back base runners for Army for just the second time. Jakeen goes first pitch hunting, comes up late on the fastball. Sub with throwing a little bit firmer than Micah Dallas. He was throwing it 90-91, but Sublet's throwing it 94-95. You got to gear it up. One of the best in the Patriot League. Good slugging percentage with the doubles. Ability to get on base. The only player with more hits than him in the league is his teammate Herdebees, who stands at second base. The 24 doubles, fifth in the country. He's been important for them in the postseason as well. In the championship series against Navy, he started off championship game in the ninth inning with a double and scored what ended up being the winning run. This is one of the few games this afternoon that has gone according to seed with some good 3-2 matchups going on. Still have those weather delays in North Carolina, but third seeded Campbell leads NC State in the bottom of the ninth inning. Clemson at number three seed in the bottom of the seventh, up 7-3 seven over Illinois. Michigan, a three seed, up 6-0. Bottom nine against Creighton. It's a good year for the state of Nebraska as well, with Nebraska-Omaha getting into the field also. Nebraska under Darren Erstad and Creighton. All the three teams that sponsor the sport, the Division I level in Nebraska getting into the NCAA tournament field. Sunday Night Baseball this week is in the Bronx for the series finale between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Coverage starts at 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app with baseball tonight, Sunday Night Countdown. The game to follow and budget approximately six to eight hours for that game to finish. They always do go real long, the Yankees and the Red Sox. 
They love each other. There you go. If you find a baseball game across America without a Yankee hat, color me surprised. Mike Cousins with Greg Swindell here in Lubbock, Texas. First of our two games today. It'll be Dallas Baptist out of the Missouri Valley Conference in Florida from the SEC. About an hour after this one wraps up. We had a couple other 1-4 matchups right now as well. UIC, the Flames of Chicago, up 1-0 over Louisville, but that's just underway. And Stanford opening up an 11-0 lead over four-seed Sacramento State. Army scored in the sixth. They're one run, and now here in the eighth, getting another runner over to third. Can they take advantage? One, two to Trey Martin, and the shortstop goes chasing on the heat off the outside edge. Two away. To the breaking ball the pitch before it got the called strike. A really good breaking ball. This one. Fastball starts away. Stays away. Martin can't catch up with. It. It'll be up to the designated hitter, John McKenna. 0 for 3. His sublet looks to clear his first inning after seven innings from Micah Dallas, the freshman starter. Bottom of the eighth inning, it'll be seven, eight, and nine hitters for Texas Tech. Among those, though, they've got four hits and they've scored three runs at the bottom of the lineup. So everybody's been a contributor. We'll have Kurt Wilson leading it off. The only guy without a hit for Texas. Strike at the knees. I tell you what, if someone ever bottle this up, it's shown a good change up, a good breaking ball, but that fastball is filthy. Challenge him in on the hands. Long run from third. The throw to first in time. Morell across the diamond doing what Sublet couldn't. Picking it up and putting it away and preventing Army's second run. Bottom of the lineup on the way for Texas Tech. Let's just put it this way. No one can escape the excitement of postseason baseball. 10-run lead for Texas Tech. There's a lot to be happy about for the hometown fans. As eight of the nine in their starting lineup have picked up at least one base hit. The big blast came last inning. Cameron Warren with his 15th home run of the year, a three-run shot, cleared the wall in left center. Now the only question is whether as Kurt Wilson leads off, if he gets a base hit, will all nine hitters be able to get one? He's the only one without one. But everybody's reached base. It'll be Wilson, Morell, and Fulford in the last of the eighth. On track at this point to be the last trip to the plate tonight for Texas Tech. Comfortable afternoon here in Lubbock. Good temperature, good crowd. We'll see Dallas Baptist in Florida in game number two. Also available on ESPN3 and the ESPN app, so you can take it with you wherever you go.
Cart in his second inning with the payoff pitch, lined into right, and down for a base hit. And it gets past Titus in right field. Not only does Wilson have his first hit of the day, but he's got three bases to show for it. Red Raiders not done threatening to score just yet. Wilson's going to reach out and poke that one in the right. We'll see what happens out there. Ball just stays under his glove, doesn't get down on it. At that point, all nine batters now with base hits. Wilson gets a single, takes two bases on the error by Titus in right field. So all nine with at least a hit. Seven have scored at least one run. You don't have to go back very far to find a double-digit offensive output for Texas Tech either. Just go back a few days to the 25th when they took on West Virginia in the Big 12 tournament. Back-to-back -to -back game, they lost the second. They scored 10 runs in that first game against West Virginia. Also scored 10 at the beginning of the month against Oklahoma. So first and third, as Morrell reaches. And Cole Stillwell, the freshman catcher, steps in here for Fulford. It appears to be a one-for-one -one swap. Takes a mileage off of Fulford's legs. And gives Stillwell a chance behind the plate and a swing at the bat. Ceruto, the catcher, with room makes the catch for the first down. So despite UCLA being the number one seed in this tournament, according to Las Vegas, not necessarily the overall favorite with Vanderbilt getting that nod, but Texas Tech, in a three-way tie with Louisville, Mississippi State, 15 to one odds. How does your handicapping look, Greg? Who you're picking? You, I know you, your heart, you picked Florida State, but in your realistic bracket. I'll take Florida one odds. On Vandy. Vandy? Yeah. That possibly could be the Golden Spikes player over there. And really good pitch and staff experience. Goes a long way. Max Marshak, the pinch hitter for Texas Tech. How about you? I'm, uh, I'm hard-pressed to choose against what Vegas says. They always seem to know something we don't, right? <laughs> for some reason. For some reason. Although, if today's game is any indication of how Texas Tech plans to play in the postseason, granted it's a one versus four matchup, you get yourself a really good pitching performance like this. And look, they eight of their 11 runs came off of non-home run swings. Not needing to charge a lot of power into things and getting a solid seven from Micah Dallas as he struck out seven and was perfect through four. And it's a team that, if this holds up, have won 17 out of their last 21, a team that's playing really good baseball. I think they've been the three World Series since what 2012. They've been two out of the last three, so they got a chip on the shoulder. They got something to prove. 
if they can get through here and get through a super and make some noise in Omaha. A loss for Army in this game puts them into an elimination game with the loser of our next game, Dallas Baptist in Florida. Double elimination format. So you lose one, and your back is immediately against the wall. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. So after back-to-back -back runners get on base to start the inning, it's back-to-back -back outs. So this is how it plays out. We have two today, two tomorrow, two Sunday, and if necessary, one game on Monday as well. And whoever loses today's games, you get a quick turnaround, especially in that second game where it is a noon local time start. So that could end somewhere around 10, between 10 and 11 if it comes down to the average uh, time of a game. And you're back about 12 hours later. Ball in the dirt. And Morrell takes second base without a throw. It is a quick turnaround. But you know if you're in that game, your back's against the wall, adrenaline will take over for both the teams that are playing in that ball game. But Tremba rifles it down the line. Got a catch. Nice grab there. Look, they're not even warmed up and they're ready to play. And he, already, he already had a ball in the glove. That's impressive. Nicely done. We didn't panic. Kept his composure. Let the ball come to him down there. While well, everybody else that didn't have gloves was bailing. See the glove poke out right here. He turns around like, where are y'all going? Yep, I was ready. Big curve hangs high for Cart. Dallas Baptist has been a perennial postseason program as of late. They're one of just nine teams to get into the postseason for six straight years. And the other teams that are among those are some of the elite in college baseball, just to name a few. Florida, Florida State, Louisville, LSU, Vanderbilt. Upstairs again, and it's three and two. They played in Dallas Baptist has four straight regional championship games, falling just short of making it to Super Regionals. Three and two, runners at second and third, two away, last of the eighth, and there, Cart gets the curveball that he wanted and gets the strikeout as well to end the inning. Last chance for Army as we go to the ninth and love it. All right. Welcome back to NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Here in Lubbock, Texas on their home field, the Texas Tech Red Raiders stand three outs away from polishing off an opening round win. 11-1 is their lead. No costumery needed for them. They've come out and been exactly who they are. The number eight national C, the number one team in this four team regional. Sellout crowd, fifth straight season. They sold out season tickets here and every ticket was accounted for before the first pitch of this game. Some three hours ago at six, seven, eight in the lineup for Army here on the top of the ninth inning against Caleb Freeman the junior who comes on to try and finish things off. Good spot for guys who you will need later on in this region and throughout postseason. Sublet last inning, now Freeman this inning. Get them in there, get them a clean inning, get them right. They got an exemplary start from Micah Dallas, the freshman seven innings on 99 pitches. 
Polished off his outing with a seventh strikeout. And last inning, Ryan Sublet faced five batters. Stranded two, didn't let anybody across. The only run for Army on an RBI double in the sixth from Trey Martin. Freeman, like Sublet last inning, hit 96 on the gun. Chance to play this one, a long run. It's about 15 feet wide for Otremba giving chase. Owen two. Seventeenth of outing this season for Freeman. Last year, pitched 22 times, second most on the team. Adams does what he'd yet to do so far today, and that's to reach on a base hit. 96 mile an hour fastball. Then you just hang a breaking ball over the middle of the plate. Adams does a good job of staying with that after seeing good velocity on the fastball. Freshman catcher Cam Ceruto. Nobody out, runner at first. And there goes Adams towards second. And right back to the bag with that ball out of play. Cameron Warren playing behind Adams at first. Stay out of the double play. He was taken off. Now you see Cameron Warren maybe going to come over and hold him on. Necessary? If you want to, two for one, try to get the double play right here. Another thing that this advantage for Texas Tech does here in the ninth inning with the 10 run lead. You're not only, as you mentioned earlier, getting some guys some work who you're going to need later on. So don't let their layovers be too long after the Big 12 tournament defeat against West Virginia. But it also saves your best bullpen arms for your game tomorrow and game Sunday. When you get through this one, tomorrow is the important one. Win that second game. They, now you have to get beat twice. Got to get beat on Sunday and then again on Monday. And yeah, game one is important, but staying in that winner's bracket, game two is more important. Again, he touches 96 on the gun, just trying to harness it over the strike zone. Tried the breaking ball with Adams. See if he goes back to it again. You can get the double play with that one. Went with the fastball, missed the spot. Wanted to go in right there, left it out over the plate. Each pitch sets up another one. If you get that ball in off the plate for a ball, now you can set up that breaking ball away. Well, after failing to do that, still with a 1-2 count. Comes back off speed. And ends up in the Army dugout. Another good play down there. Got the sunglasses on. Reached up, grabbed it, and then sort of did a drop. There he is. Did a drop the mic thing. Just kind of tossed the ball back behind him.
is so much behind that fastball. That one slipped a little bit. Can he corral it here and put away Ceruto? Nope. Ball four, back-to-back -back base runners to start the ninth for Freeman. And not what Tech wants, not what Coach Tadlock wants, and Freeman was for the stuff that he has, just can't, like you said, harness it over the the plate. Pinch runner at first base is Anthony Crompton, the junior outfielder who steps in for the catcher. So they get a little bit more speed on the base paths. And get back-to-back -back base runners for just the third time today. Breaking ball for a strike. Starts off Josh White, nothing in one. So Adams at second, Crompton at first. No base runners through the first four innings for Army today against Micah Dallas. Hit Trey Martin to lead off the fifth. But still a stellar outing. So after getting the breaking ball for a strike to start, Freeman comes back to it. She's had trouble locating that fastball. Trying to get something that he can get comfortable with over the over the plate. He gets the ground ball he wanted, but not the result. Through the right side, it's a base hit. Adams is waved around. His slide at the plate, he's safe. Throw to second on the back end of the play. That eliminates White. But he drives in a run. Army has its second of the day. And Crompton ends up in third. Ideally, a chance to turn two there with a ground ball and runners on base. They get one unconventionally and are left with a runner at third. The easier play for Stillwell was at third right here. But he goes for the tag. The runner was halfway to third base. But... Once he looks up, can see that he can get wide at second and a strong throw down there. A swipe tag right there. And a strong throw to second. A good tag down there to get the out. The inning continues for Titus, the sophomore, who's 0 for 3. Well, there's a couple of not so high scoring games down the stretch for Army in that championship series against Navy. 6 2 win, a 4 2 loss, a 4 3 win. Firepower for Texas Tech just overwhelming today. And then with what would have been an exceptionally long layoff with their conference tournament championship being played on May 19th. Army went out and added another game against Harvard. So they played that game four days later, which made it only eight days between their last game and this one, rather than one what would have been almost two weeks without competitive action. 2-1 to Titus from Freeman. Harvard opening up shortly against Oklahoma State. Part of the Oklahoma City Regional. the hill. Freeman looks to third, loops it to first. Texas Tech is one out away from a victory. Almost didn't get it to first with the loop. 
Jim Tadlock going, what's that boy doing out there? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the times there, you'll just see the underhand throw to first base. I prefer the overhand, but not the loop. <laughs> Underhand means you have to use your legs to run halfway over there. Then well, that's it. too much. That's too much work. <laughs> As a pitcher, you want to save your legs. Last chance for Herta Bees and the Black Knights. Down 11 to two and down to their last out. A loss for them. The turnaround is a noon local time. First pitch tomorrow. And our second game to follow. It'll be about an hour between final out and first pitch. Florida, Dallas Baptist. Here in Lubbock. Freeman needs one more strike. The game is over. Texas Tech dominant from start to finish, putting 11 runs on the board, getting seven innings from Micah Dallas, and they advance in the winner's bracket. They'll take on the winner of Florida and Dallas Baptist. Texas Tech moving on to play tomorrow night, the winner of the second game. But you called it. They, they started. It started out with Micah Dallas on the mound by getting a clean inning, and then the bats took over to give him the lead. A strong seven innings from him, and then a strong offensive output by the Red Raiders puts them in a good spot, winning this first game in the winners bracket tomorrow against next game's winner. Their dominant string of play continues. They've now won 17 of their last 21 games. Only team in the country as a host for the fourth straight year. And we saw why here in this opening game. They went at 11 to two. So for our entire crew, my partner Greg Swindell, I'm Mike Cousin saying thanks for watching. We say so long for now from Lubbock, Florida, Dallas Baptist on the way in an hour.